USC football gets put on the weakest probation in NCAA history. Jim Harbaugh wonders how long the Chargers will have their defensive coordinator and the cause of death for Dodger legend Fernando Valenzuela is released. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. So it is November 13th, 2024, back in the Sanctum Sanctorum of LA Sports. It's going to be a lovely day. And if you like being in the know about LA Sports, click the clack the like button. Click the clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that. It'll let you know when we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. Now, before we go through the news and notes, we'll look at the scoreboard. There weren't any games involving LA teams yesterday. I actually read a book. It was kind of cool. Meanwhile, today, Memphis is in town to play the Lakers at 7. Anthony Davis told the scribes his eye is fine and he plans on playing. Clippers are at Houston at 5. Mo Bamba hasn't played for the Clippers this season with a knee injury, has taken his minimal talent to the G League. So he's not in Houston, but maybe he'll wind up being the backup center the Clippers so desperately desire. The Kings are at Colorado at 7, and the University of Texas Arlington is at USC at basketball at 8 o'clock. But what do you say we get to the news? When you hear the word probation in a court of law, you're kind of relieved, right? Unless, of course, you were the victim of a felony. The word probation in college athletics, on the other hand, is supposed to make our blood run cold. Whoa, are we losing bowl games? Losing scholarships? Are we vacating Heisman trophies? Damn it, we are so screwed. Only judging from the probation that USC football was put on yesterday, if they're gonna lose bowl bids or scholarships, it's gonna to have to be the old fashioned way by losing football games in the fourth quarter. The Trojans football program was fined $50,000. That's it? 50K? I mean, good Lord. 50,000. Even in this economy, if it meant I could avoid jail, I could probably scrounge up 50K by pawning some crap and asking my wife to do OnlyFans. 50K. For a made for for one of the two biggest traditional football programs in American history. 50K. I mean, have you ever been to a USC tailgate? Have you ever smelled the old money from a USC tailgate? 50 Gur is what falls out of the back pocket of a booster's pants. 50K. And you're, we're supposed to think this is a thing. Now, to be clear, it pretty much fits the crime. USC exceeded the number of coaches that they were allowed to have. Ooh, what a bad boy that Lincoln Riley is. If you're wondering how the hell it happened, basically it goes like this. You might remember that former UCLA football coach Chip Kelly hired a bunch of his friends. One was a former coach, and that one particular former coach was hired as the director of leadership. And it was a ridiculous make work job, you know, like Caltrans. But the guy was never on the field. See, the difference is, uh, the difference is UCLA kept that guy off the field, Riley let his guys on the field. Naughty, naughty. Now this is getting a lot, this story is getting a lot of play in the national press, tons of it. But you know why? It's because the scribes are trying to build a case to fire Lincoln Riley by any means necessary. The scribes have Lincoln Riley in the crosshairs so much that they are trying to make a jaywalking ticket look like homicide. You know, and in the grand scheme of things, who gives a damn? Besides, the NCAA, by the way, has relaxed the rules about assistant coaches on the field. You can pretty much have as many as you want. Lincoln Riley could hire all of Philip Rivers' 
Antonio Cromartie's and Evander Holyfield's children, all of them, which we believe the count is currently at 35, put them on the sidelines as coaches and the NCAA does not care anymore. So don't try to scare me with this probation as if it's some massive threat to USC's whatever. Oh no, our reputation is trashed by $50,000. With the Chargers season at six and three and heading into the most difficult stretch of their season, they've got a five game stretch with um, Baltimore and Kansas City on the docket. Jim Harbaugh took his act to the podcast world to sell us all on the greatness of first year defensive coordinator, Jesse Minter. And honestly, that makes sense because nobody can score on the bolts. They're averaging less than 13 points allowed per game. So Harbaugh, who has a bit of used car salesman in him, let's be real, said, quote, we're probably going to have to just enjoy Jesse Minter while we have him because I have a feeling he's going to be a head coach next year. He's just intuitive. He knows offensive football almost as well as defensive football. He knows how an offense is going to try to, att to attack. There's some play callers that just have it, too. He has it, unquote. Now, listen to that quote and... I'm thinking like when my friends and I used to talk about somebody having it, we usually met chlamydia. But I don't really have much of a problem with Harbaugh taking up for his pal. I, I don't. They, they ran at Michigan together and, and won a national title. Minter's defense translates well into the NFL. But if you're a Chargers fan, you kind of want to hit the pause button because... Um, you guys have history with the hot young defensive coordinator getting the lead job before his time. So you tell me if Minter actually has the stuff to be a head coach. Give it a little bit more time, I would say. By the way, speaking of lead jobs, does wide receiver DJ Chark even have one? I mean, I don't want to make too big of a deal out of this, but he plays his first game of the year against Tennessee on Sunday after missing so much time due to injury. Zero catches. Not exactly a fine how do you do. Fernando Valenzuela's passing was caused by septic shock, according to the death certificate. In addition, the Dodger legend had decompensated alcoholic cirrhosis and non-alcoholic steth hepatitis cirrhosis as underlying causes. Look, in layman's terms, his liver was trashed, okay? But in other layman's terms, how do you simultaneously have something that's alcoholic and non-alcoholic? Like you're mixing a Modelo with Odules or something. Now, now, understand, I'm not trying to clown Valenzuela as an alcoholic or a drunk. Hell, I was an alcoholic and a drunk, right? So you guys can go ahead and clown me all you want. The doctors also think Valenzuela had Creutzfeldt-Jacob disease, which is a rare brain disorder that usually kills you in less than a year. Uh, Valenzuela was a six-time All-Star. He won the Cy Young and Rookie of the Year honors back in 1981. And we all know and remember the legacy he left wearing Dodger blue. It made perfect sense. The Rams would want the talent upgrade of Steve Avila and Jonah Jackson back on the offensive line for Monday Night Football. What they didn't get was the synchronicity that you hoped for. You know, the knowledge that the guy lining up next to you on the O-line will be able to pick up the stunt or a blitz. But after the Rams didn't even score a touchdown on the three and six Miami Dolphins, after having allowed Matthew Stafford to get sacked four times, Sean McVay said, no, this wasn't on the O-line at all. Quest uh, quote, there were too many things that it just seemed like we were off and we never gave ourselves a chance. 
it's not exclusively on the line. That's as a whole, collectively, unquote. So, I watched the game. I'm assuming many of you did as well. Do you buy it? I'm just asking. See, one reason I might be able to buy it is because the Rams offensive line has been in a state of flux for the entire year. Kevin Dotson is the only guy to start all nine games for the Rams on offensive line. I realize the NBA season's still very young, but we all had such high hopes for Dalton Connect with the Lakers, right? But he is not even thought of as being in the running for Rookie of the Year uh, because he was supposed to be the best pure shooter in the draft class, and so far he can't shoot. Like 39% from the floor, 29% from three-point range. Now, for his part, J.J. Reddick says he knows a thing or two about shooting slumps, like when he played for the Mavericks at the end of his career and shot 35%. Quote, I think for shooters, it's hard when you get off to a slow start, slow start shooting. It can kind of weigh on you. I've talked to him about it, and he believes that shot is going in every single time. And so do I, unquote. If you've watched this show even semi-regularly, you know I'm not a big fan of lists, Okay. It's a very lazy byline for a scribe. You don't even have to call sources. You don't even have to chase a lead, you know, a hot tip. You actually, you're not digging out actual news. You just rank whatever the hell you think an editor will sleepwalk through and cut you a check for. But here's a list I'm gonna give you because it bolsters a point that I made yesterday, that the Galaxy and LAFC are the two best teams remaining in MLS Cup playoffs that if they meet in the Western Conference Finals, that could be the de facto MLS Cup title. Sports Illustrated has ranked the top 10 players remaining in MLS Cup playoffs. Now the best player, according to this scribe, is LAFC's Dennis Bulanga. And even though I'm a Galaxy supporter, I honestly don't have much of a problem with that. He did win a golden boot and he competed for a second one this year. Besides, if you're a Galaxy fan, two, three, and four are Ricky Pooj, Joseph Paintsill, and Gabriel Peck. So you'd be pretty good with having that if that ranking is something you buy into. Uh, for the record, Batus Bokush of LAFC ranks sixth. Oh boy, color me not aroused. The Sparks' Cameron Brink will appear in next year's Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. This is a big deal if it were 1977. I mean, whatever. I'm no longer in the third grade. I know what a naked woman looks like now. And if you want, and she's not naked. Not that I need her to be. I'm happily married. Look. The Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue means absolutely nothing now. And it hasn't meant anything for decades. You know why? It's really simple. You know it as well as I do. You can simultaneously watch Faithful Angelinos and pornography on your same PC. So as creepy as that makes me feel, you know it's true. So as far as I'm concerned with Cameron Brink, Continue enjoying building your brand instead of actually building a basketball career. But you let me know what you think of the comments thread. Talk to me about how frightened you are over USC football getting probation. Ooh. For that matter, do you actually accept that Jesse Minter is going to be a head coach in the NFL next year? And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We talk LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Cortel Queso production. Take care.